Hello. Um, in this video, I'm going to demonstrate some really basic hand tracking with the, with the Kinect, and I'm going to make a particle system come out of my hand. That's what we're going to look at in this particular video. So in the previous video, what I did is create this sketch where I calibrated a minimum threshold and a maximum threshold. So I'm only looking at depth pixels between those values. So if I stand exactly here and move my hand around, I can, you can kind of see a pretty clean outline of my hand. Of course, this breaks down if I stand too close or if I stand too far away, but you know, and so I should mention that ultimately this type of hand tracking might be better suited for the official Microsoft SDK. And I'll get to that eventually using a PC and a different uh, uh, processing connect library. But I think it's still nice to see these examples of how you can do this stuff with the raw depth. Okay, so let's look at how you might do this. So this is where we are. We're looking for all pixels that are in between a minimum threshold and a maximum threshold. So how might I find the center of all of those pixels? right here in the center of my hand. Well, the way that you find the center of something, off, sometimes called the centroid, if you want to sound like you're from the future, let's look at the centroid, um, is by finding the average location. So let's say we have a collection of pixels, you know, that are loosely, this is some strange like three-fingered hand, right? These are all the pixels we care about. We can plainly see that this is the cent about around the center. But how would I find out the average? Well, let's say you just had these x values. This is the x value 0, 3, uh, you know, 4, 8, 12. To find the average of some numbers, add them all together and then divide by the total. 0 plus 3 plus 4 plus 8 plus 12 divided by 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 divided by 5 is the average. So if we add up all, add all x's and we add all y's and we divide by total pixels, not the total pixels in the entire image, just the pixels that we've picked out that are in between this minimum and maximum threshold, then we'll find the center of that area of pixels. So let's look at that. How do we, inside that loop, add up all the x's, add up all the y's, divide by the total number of pixels? It's actually a pretty simple thing to do. This might be the shortest video I've ever made. Um, I'm going to start. I need some value to keep track of the the sum of all the x pixels, so I'll add that in. Then I need another variable to keep track of uh, summing up all the y pixels, so I'll add that in. Then what I also need is a, just a total pixels, zero. Now I'm making all of these floats because I think it's going to be a bit more accurate to use floating point math. It doesn't really matter. They, they're, they're technically the they're integers. There's no like pixel 3.21, but it's a little simpler to work with floats. So this value is where I'm going to add up all the x's. This value is where I'm going to add up all the y's. This is going to be the total number of pixels. Remember, that's not a fixed number. Like depending on where my hand is, how many pixels is it picking up? That's, um, that's going to be the total. Once I have that, I can divide some x by total, some y by total, and that's going to be average x and average y. So let's look at that. So right here, these are the pixels that count, right? These pixels right here are the ones that are pink. Those are the ones that are between the minimum and maximum threshold. That x is greater than 100 is just to get rid of the wall that's over here because the wall is 100 pixels and over. Um, so in order to do that, now I'm going to say right in here, I'm going to say sum x plus equal x, sum y plus equal y. Like I'm literally just adding up all the x's, adding up all the y's, and then total pixels plus plus. So for every single pixel, just add one. I need to add up the x values for the x, the y values for the y, and then figure out how many pixels are there. And then at the end, what do I got? I've got I don't need to um, draw this text on the screen anymore. What do I need to say? I need to say the average x, right? The average x is the sum x divided by the total pixels. The average y is sum y divided by total pixels. And then now, why don't I just draw, let's make this a different color. Why don't I draw an ellipse at average x, average y, and 100, um, I don't know, what, what size should that ellipse be? 64 by 64. So let's run this. You can see there's a circle, it's kind of going crazy, right? Because there's nothing in, but now you can see that circle is always around the center of my hand. Now one thing to notice, if I put two hands here, it's the center of each. So in a minute, maybe I'll talk about how I might deal with that. But you can see now I'm getting, now it's not the center of my hand, it's the center of all the pixels it's seeing. So if my arm is in here, it's getting the center. But if I position my hand in a pretty good spot, 
um, you can see that it can get some pretty accurate thing going on here. So let's make it do something a little bit more interesting just for the sake of, I don't know, this, I don't know if there's a huge point to this, but here's, um, whoops, didn't I, didn't I just fix this? Uh, what's wrong here? Everybody, I, I, I did this. A second ago, it's fine. Um, so this is an example of a particle system where all the particles are coming out where the mouse is. And you can see right here in the code, there's just a little bit of a simple uh, loop of line cone that says add particle at mouse x mouse y, right? So it's just as easy now as bringing all this particle system code over and saying instead of adding the particles at mouse x mouse y, add them at average x average y. So uh, let's see if we can make that happen. I'm going to bring, I'm going to do a quick little, I should have probably do like the cooking show thing where I have, and now coming out of the oven, I already pre-made this, but I'm just going to copy paste everything over real quickly. I'm going to bring the particle system uh, object. I'm going to put this in my setup over here. And I'm going to put this stuff in draw. And at the end here. And then what do I need? I need all this particle code. So uh, I don't actually need this camera params tab for this example. Uh, uh, hold on. Uh, uh, hand tracking sort of particles. I don't know what to call this. Uh, I'm going to get rid of this uh, tab, cam camera params. Uh, and then I'm going to add a new tab. I really shouldn't be doing this in the video. <laughs> I think I crashed processing. Hold on. Uh, no, everything's fine. I'm going to add a new tab called, this was not, this was not good. You, you fast forward, fast forward a minute. I'm going to move the particle system over. That was the particle class. <laughs> and I'm going to do, it doesn't matter. Uh, I'm going to move the particle over. Just imagine that I did that correctly. I'm going to run this. We can see, right, the particles, the, the circle is following my hand. The particles are following the mouse. How do I make those do the same exact thing? Now all I need to do is say, make the particles not at the mouse but at average x, average y. And you know what? Let's, let's actually add about 10 particles per frame to make it kind of make more particles. And let's run this. And we can see now as I put my hand here, I can like control where the particle, I can make this like fiery thing come out of my, it's not fiery, but come out of my hand. So you can see I'm now using my hand to control Particles coming out. I know I can do my ta-da dance, and it you know works with anything. Like I can I can have part like this stuff like emanating from my <laughs> like alien and like bursting out or something. I don't. know, This is all getting a little bit weird. But you can see I can I can strike this pose, and uh, it's running kind of slow because I'm drawing like so many circles on the screen. Um, it was a little bit unnecessary to like do that much, but. <laughs> You can see. Anyway, so I can make the particles move faster. You can, you can get where this is going here. So this is one example of what you can do by having a kind of specific setup, knowing where all the pixels are, thresholding them, finding the center of something. Um, this is what you can do. Now, let me say a couple more things before I go into the next scenario. Number one, uh, um, and let's, um, let's turn the particles off for a second. Number one is we have this issue of one hand, two hands, the thing in the center. On, on one hand, this is kind of cool. I'm like, uh, I am a magician <laughs> levitating a ball around. <laughs> I, mean, my, my, I forgot that I was making a video <laughs> for a second. On one hand, that's sort of an effect on its own feature, not a bug type thing. On the other hand, you might actually want to have a circle for each hand. And in that sense, you need to employ a more sophisticated blob detection mechanism. For example, you don't want just the average of all of the pixels. You want the average of a bunch of pixels, but don't include pixels that are over a certain distance threshold from other ones. So this is something that I could potentially demonstrate in a future video in this series. I'd be happy to add one in. But also in this case, one thing you can do if you have this very clean image, you can pass it to a library that might do that type of edge detection, blob detection, contour detection for you. And there's two libraries, I'll try to link to them in the description that I might recommend. One is called blob detection, does kind of what you're thinking. Another library is called OpenCV, which has a lot of computer vision functionality built into it, but one of the things in it is blob detection. So maybe I'll try to like show that at a certain point, but you can see the basic idea here is still just working even without uh, an extra sophisticated layer of looking for separate chunks. Um, okay, thanks for watching this. I think in the next video, I have two more that I intended to do today, although it is 12.10. Uh, I wanted to see if I could look at, for the top, 
Like, how do you find the highest pixel? Um, you, or the clo you know, closest pixel is something you could also find, but I think highest might be interesting because uh, somebody here at ITP has a project that she's working on, which is uh, having somebody move up and down. So I think that's a useful demonstration. And then also maybe looking back at that grid again, um, but averaging all of the depth points within cells of a grid. Okay, that's what I intend to make next. I'm gonna hit stop on the record button. Uh, come on.